Hello. Today I thought we would talk about cutting plates a little bit. With a show of hands, how many people are familiar with what I'm talking about when I say cutting plate? It looks like most of you know, but some of you don't. So let's explain it real quick. Your anvil has a hardened surface. It's typically hard steel or hard cast steel, and your chisel is hard steel. Those two surfaces don't play well together. And I've mentioned this before, but you're either going to damage your chisel, damage your anvil, or damage both. Chisel's pretty easy to resharpen and fix. Your anvil's a lot of work to regrind, so you sure don't want to put gouges in your anvil. So when you're chiseling, putting a little plate under the piece that you're chiseling so that you can chisel through is really handy. Cutting plates come in a wide variety of styles. Everybody's got their own idea on what makes the best cutting plate, so I'm just going to give you a few ideas today. Without a doubt, the simplest cutting plate is just a piece of scrap off the floor. This is just stuff from the scrap pile or by the bandsaw or the shear or wherever you cut your materials, and it works just fine. The problem is sometimes they kind of skitter around the anvil and they can be a little bit of a nuisance but they're generally free because it's stuff that was scrap and was going to get taken to the recycler anyways and they take zero effort to prepare and use and you can find them in all sorts of different sizes and some of them are covered with crud because they've been next to some piece of machinery or down in the dirt or whatever but they all work just a slightly higher step up than that would be to plan ahead and cut a few pieces of plate, again, just scraps, but these I've taken the time to file or grind the corners off of so there's no sharp edges to either cut myself or scar my work, put a hole in them, and I can hang them on the stump with my anvil, and I know where they are, and I don't have to go looking for one when I need one. But even these have the same problem, that they're going to slide around the anvil and they get knocked on the floor. That doesn't bother me much. This is still pretty simple, and this is what I tend to use is just little pieces like this. But if you don't like that, you can go a, a big step up and make a more permanent cutting plate. <clears throat> this one has a diagonal shank that fits in the hardy hole. It's not a tight fit, doesn't really need to be, but now this is a good place to cut. And this works quite well. This has the advantage over the other ones in that if I am cutting and using a hold fast, it's big enough that I can get that hold fast on there. Now I've got to keep advancing it, so a longer one might be better if you're doing this a lot. The problem with a small cutting plate and a hold fast, say you're cutting up here, is now the hold fast is going to bend your work, and that's not a good thing. So that's just another, another style of cutting plate. Let's take a look at making another one that solves the problem of falling off side to side, but it's still movable end to end, so it's a bit adjustable. It's kind of a saddle cutting plate. I'm just starting with a piece of quarter inch by three and a half inch, because it's just what happened to be out in the pile, some sort of a remnant from something. It's about eight inches long. Those are not critical measurements, and the only reason it's that long is because my anvil is five inches wide. And I just want to bend some ears down, so I'm going to kind of center that by eye. Make a couple of silver pencil lines on the bottom of it there. Make just a little row of punch marks so I can find this. And then I'm going to go to the vise. Or actually go to the forge. And once it's hot, then we're going to go to the vise. I just want to line my center hole, center punch holes up. And then give it a bend.
So all I need to do with the vise, I'm going to refine that at the anvil. You can certainly do this whole thing at the anvil. I just think doing it in the vise is a little easier. Now it's just a matter of making sure it fits the anvil. These aren't upset square corners or anything, they're just there to keep it from sliding off. Make sure it's flat, try to take the wrinkles out of it, you'll be happier with it. I'm going to go ahead and knock the edges off so it's less likely to gouge the edge of my work. And that's really all it takes. Then you don't have to make one this big. So that's that. It's a whole lot easier to get off of there once it cools. Although it may shrink a little bit, so you you may have to do a little bit of work on it after it cools to make sure you're happy with it. And of course you can sand it smooth if you want to. That's just a, a saddle style cutting plate. So it just goes on there like that and can slide up and down. I also notice that my anvil's a little fat back here towards the hardy hole because it won't slide there. But it doesn't need to. Just use that wherever you want to and it can't slide off this way. And it's not very likely to slide off this way. You've got to work at that a little bit. So that's another option. Lots of options. But the anvil is not the only place you might be cutting with some sort of a chisel like tool and be worried about cutting all the way through and damaging the surface below or damaging your chisel. So let's take a look at a couple other places in the shop where I do some cutting and a cutting plate becomes necessary. The treadle hammer is another great place for chiseling or even cutting off and typical handled hot sets work great under the treadle hammer. I wouldn't be cutting off with a regular handheld chisel under here that could be risky but you don't want to cut into this plate, that's your anvil just like your anvil and regular anvil is an anvil this surface is an anvil on a treadle hammer and it's removable, this is a clay spencer style inline hammer and it's got a one inch hardy hole on it so I have a one inch plate that can fit in there and that works pretty darn well, this is mild steel just like all the others I showed you and it just replaces the hardened plate, but I also have something a friend made and this has a metal frame with a big piece of bronze in it so that's even better to cut into and it just saddles, you don't actually have to remove this that can go over there and that goes on there and it works very nicely for cutting off onto I've seen people do this with aluminum. I'm a little leery about aluminum because it, I'm afraid it might melt at forging temperatures for the iron. I rarely do any chisel type work under the power hammer. For the most part if I'm going to cut I'm just using a hack to side cut and this is specially designed for cutting under a power hammer so that it isn't tippy like a tall chisel would be. But it still could mar up my bottom die which is 4140 and it's hardened. I don't want to do that, so I have a cutting plate that I can put in there. It's got a little handle so your fingers don't go under the die to insert the little scrappy piece. And it just holds in my tool holder. Again, it moves around, but it doesn't really make a bit of difference because it's, it's not a precise die. It's just to cut into so that you don't damage your, your actual power hammer die. So, whether you are cutting off at the anvil and like something that fits in the hardy hole or a saddle to go over your anvil or just a scrappy bit of plate 
or whether you're cutting off on the treadle hammer or the power hammer, protect your chisel and protect the surface you're working on that is hardened steel that is much harder to replace than this little scrappy bit that you're going to cut up. Soft plates or cutting plates are very handy, very useful. You should always have something around. The step on the anvil a lot of times has been referred to as a cutting table. I don't recommend that. It just marks it up. It ruins that part of your anvil. Somebody has done that to my anvil long before I owned it. I don't use it for that. At some point I will grind that clean and dress it and make it smooth because it is much more useful for other things than it is as a cutting surface. It's easy enough to make a cutting surface. So I suggest just go ahead and make, make one or get something out of the scrap when you're chiseling. It's easy enough to do. Now be honest, how many of you raised your hand when I asked if you knew what a cutting plate was? Yeah, there's some of you. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was useful. Give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. Stick around. Watch some more videos. But do make time in your day to get out to the shop. Challenge your abilities. Use your imagination. Make something. But do stay safe. Do wear your safety glasses. And we will see you for the next one.